This is the story of the giraffe and the Pelly and me. Not far from where I live, there is a queer old empty wooden house standing all by itself on the side of the road. I long to explore inside it, but the door is always locked. And when I peer through a window, all I can see is darkness and dust. I know the ground floor used once to be a shop because I can still read the faded lettering across the front which says the grubber. My mother has told me in our part of the country in the olden days a grubber was another name for a sweet shop. And now every time I look at it, I think to myself, what a lovely old sweet shop it must have been. On the shop window itself, somebody has painted in white the words, for sale. One morning, I noticed that for sale, had been scraped off the shop window and in its place somebody had painted sold. I stood there staring at the new writing, wishing like mad that it had been me who had bought it. Because then I would have been able to make it into a rubber all over again. I have always longed and longed to own a sweet shop. The sweet shops of my dreams would be loaded from top to bottom with sherbet suckers and caramel fudge and Russian toffee and sugar snorters and butter gumballs and thousands and thousands of other glorious things like that. Oh boy, what I couldn't have done with that old grubber shop if it had been mine. On my next visit to the grubber, I was standing across the road gazing at the wonderful old building when suddenly an enormous bathtub came sailing out through one of the second floor windows and crashed right onto the middle of the road. A few moments later a white porcelain lavatory pan with the wooden seat still on it, came flying out of the same window and landed with a, a wonderful splintering crash just beside the bathtub. This was followed by a kitchen sink and an empty canary cage and four poster bed and two hot water bottles and a rocking horse and a sewing machine and goodness knows what else besides. It looked as though some madman was ripping out the whole of the inside of the house because now pieces of staircase and bits of banisters and a whole lot of old floorboards came whistling through one of the win windows. Then there was silence. I waited and waited, but not another sound came from within the building. I crossed the road and stood right under the windows 
and called out, Is anybody home? There was no answer. In the end, it began to get dark, so I had to turn away and start walking home. But you can bet your life, nothing was going to stop me from herring back there again tomorrow morning to see what on earth was, what, no, what the next surprise was going to be. When I got back there, back to the grubber house, the next morning, the first thing I noticed was the door. The dirty old brown door had been taken out and in its place someone had fitted a brand new red door, a brand new red one. The new door was fantastic. It was twice as high as the other one had been, and it looked ridiculous. I couldn't begin to imagine who would want a tremendously tall door, a tremendous tall door like that in his house unless it was a giant. had scraped away the sold notice on the shop window and now there was a whole lot of different writing all over the glass. I stood there reading it and reading it and trying to figure out what on earth it all meant. The ladderless window cleaning company Get your windows cleaned without a lot of dirty ladders leaning against your house. I tried to catch some sign or sound of movement inside the house, but there was none. Until all of a sudden, out of the corner of my eye, I noticed one of the windows on the top floor was slowly beginning to open outwards. Then a head appeared at the open window. I stared at the head. The head stared back at me with big round dark eyes. Suddenly, a second window was flung wide open and of all the crazy things, a gigantic white bird hopped out and perched on the windowsill. I knew what this one was because of its amazing beak which was shaped like a huge orange coloured basin. The pelican looked down at me and sung out, Oh, how I wish for a big fat fish. I'm as hungry as ever could be. A dish of fish is my only wish. How far are we from the sea? We are a long way from the sea. I called back to him, but there is a fishmonger in the village, not far away. A fish what? A fishmonger. Now what on earth could that be? The pelican asked the pelican. I have heard of a fish pie, a fish cake and a fish finger, but I have never heard of a fishmonger. Are these mongers good to eat? This question baffled me a bit, so I said, Who is your friend? 
friend in the next window. She is the giraffe, the pelican answered. Isn't, is she not wonderful? Her legs are on the ground floor and her head is looking out of the top window. As if all this wasn't enough, the window on the first floor was now flung wide open and out popped a monkey. The, mon the monkey stood on the windowsill and did a jiggly little dance. He was so skinny, he seemed to be made only out of furry bits of wire, but he danced wonderfully well. And I... And I 